Hello everybody, this is Evan Mukhtar and today we're going to be doing uh, a small lab on ICE with guest access. So essentially what we're going to be doing is um, a user, a guest user uh, to be really precise, is going to come up in my organization and it's going to connect to a specific SSID called the guest underscore SSID. Once it connects, uh, we want it to get a portal on which it has to register himself their name their number who they want to visit or something like that we can actually amend uh, the, the the fields whatever we want to and we're gonna make them register and they're gonna be popped up with their username and password and then they have to log in again to connect and get internet access so this is the basic concept of this lab uh, the thing is, it's going to be self-registration of the guest, so you don't the 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 IT guy doesn't actually need to go and um, configure the guest services. You could actually do that if you uh, enable like uh, sponsors approval. Uh, that's your choice. Uh, it actually all depends upon what your uh, organization requirements are. If you want to get the IT guys engaged and they want to be involved in that guest registration uh, or approval I would say then you can actually do that as well so just a quick look on the topology that I have over here and this is a logical design over here very simple very uh, neat I would say the the physical topology is not the same as you can see over here but it, it kind of like is like this okay logically so what we have over here is we have a wireless WLC and uh, bear in mind that's a virtual WLC and we have uh, an ICE server. Uh, they're on separate VLANs. And um, the ICE server is also a virtual machine, actually. Uh, but it's only on um, one VLAN. So that's why I have specified access. So um, it's on VLAN 35. Uh, the WLC's uh, management and uh, the APs that register with the virtual WLC are residing in VLAN 30. Um, uh, but uh, the VLANs, uh, the data VLANs are actually on different subnets like VLAN 25 and VLAN 99 over here as you can see for the guests. And uh, I also have an access switch over here on which the access point is connected to and its port is on VLAN 30 and that's an access port. So. Um, all of them are actually connected to the 40 gig firewall. Now, you may see a firewall and say, hey, this is not possible. I mean, every port of the firewall should be a separate broadcast, uh, I mean, um, domain. I mean, like, the interfaces should be separate. Normally, we have that kind of design when we see routers and also s firewalls. But in 40 gig firewall, we have in this specific model, and 40 gig does support that. So you have an internal switch inside of the 40 gig that I, that I have specified with this kind of L kind of a design over here. So they're all connecting to that. So to um, so get the idea, right? So the user is going to connect to the guest's ID, prompt in a portal, register themselves, and then log in again. So this is how it will work, just to give you a very high level view. Um, and as I said, I'm trying to make it quick as possible. So um, here I am on the ICE server. Sorry about uh, where I am right now. So I'm going back to the dashboard. So this is what you really get once you hit, I mean, put in your credentials, uh, whatever they are. And um, this is my WLC. I'm trying to see some ACLs over here, as you can see. Uh, this is a virtual WLC, as I told you before. And this is also a virtual ICE, but it doesn't actually specify over here. There's virtual, uh, maybe you're here, it will specify, yeah, there it is. So ICE VM K9. So uh, it's running 3.0.0 version and uh, VWC is running 8.5. So the first thing that you need to know and you need to configure is um, to see if that network access device is configured as a radius device or a NAD device, they call it network access device. So uh, in my lab, I already have it configured. Let me just show you what I have. 
Um, the name is virtual WLC. I specified the IP address of that virtual WLC, as you can see over here. And uh, nothing too much fancy. Only thing I did do is I changed the device type from the default to a specific device called VWC. You can actually create your own and add it over here and make it a part of it. So it's your call, however you want to do it. This is really, I would say, important because whenever you're going for policy sets, uh, you can actually match based on the device type. So this is how I like to do it. It makes things much more uh, easier to manage, I would say. Uh, then I only have the radius authentication settings and they are nothing but a secret key, I, I would say. That's the all time my favorite Cisco. So uh, that's the only key over here. And the WLC side, if I go into security and go into radius over here in a AAA radius authentication, so you got a, I got a couple of, uh, I mean, a tree of them actually, uh, I servers configured, but only one is in use as of right now. So here it is. So let me just pop it up. So over here, I just specify the IP address, the shared secret, even though it says three characters, but it's actually Cisco written. So they do it on purpose so that uh, anyone cannot guess actually what is the password. So if it was five characters, you would be like, okay, it's going to be Cisco. I know that. So uh, maybe. So I would know it. But um, the next setting, is, the important one is that change of authorization uh, over here should be enabled uh, because we're going to have guests connected and they're going to be in a specific ACL or a VLAN. Uh, you could actually uh, change the VLAN on the fly as well, but not really recommended for guest users. Uh, but the change of authorization, basically what it does is that uh, once you have an ACL applied, um, that we will apply before they register themselves. Uh, once they have registered with our ICE, um, we would actually go ahead and push another ACL so that would actually bounce the session. Uh, what will happen actually the ice will send us change of authorization towards the controller and it will kind of like bounce the session off the wireless client and then it will be granted the other ACL that will be permitting access towards the internet. So this is how it's going to work. So this is uh, the security part um, on this side and this is a network address uh, network device configuration on this side. Pretty simple, pretty neat. Okay, once that is up and the password should be same, uh, that's a no-brainer, I would say. Um, then you actually have to, first of all, as we have in our design, we have to create a guest SSID, first of all, and we're going to be tagging it with the VLAN 99. So let's do that really quick. So I go into wireless. Oh, no, not in wireless, WLANs. And i got a lot of SSIDs coming up. Okay, create a new one. And I'm going to be calling it guest underscore guest underscore SSID. Same with this guy. Oops. Guest underscore SSID. So apply that. Now, okay, so we've got it. So it's not enabled by default. There are some things that you need to amend. Uh, some basic parameters that you, you, you need to amend. Uh, first of all, let's go into security. Uh, actually, before going towards that, let's uh, change the interface type to interface group to, I think it was service server guest. Hang on, let's just apply that. It's not broadcasting. Uh, it is broadcasting, but it's not enabled. Okay, I haven't enabled that, so it won't broadcast right now. So, um, I would actually go into controller. I want to see if that interface is available, that VLAN 99 interface. So the name of that interface is server guest. I have created that name, so you can change it whenever you want. So the things I would like to see is, first of all, the port mapping. It should be one if it's virtual. And the VLAN identifier, and this is the IP address of that um, interface. Hang on, if you want to check that, uh, if that's working or not, let's just try to ping 99.100. And here it is. So it's pingable. So that's great. 
Okay, so let's go back to our wireless LAN or SSID configuration. We have that enabled, uh, I mean, uh, configured over here. It's disabled right now, so let's go into it and I'll choose the server guest. So I've just chosen the server guest. This is basically mapping it to that specific interface or VLAN, you would say. Uh, so let's go into security. Now, as the users will come in to my organization, they're obviously not gonna know any credentials and we don't want them to actually know them. If it was password protected, they would actually have to go to someone that knew that password. So we want to make things simpler for our uh, guests and for the IT guys as well. So the SSID will be open. So <laughs> my son is making a lot of noise on the background. Sorry about that. So um, none. The layer to security is set to none. Now I need to enable Mac filtering over here and that is because what we're gonna be doing is this uh, SSID will actually take the MAC address of the device and send it towards ICE. So we need that MAC filtering to be enabled for that to happen. And uh, the other thing that uh, <laughs> my son is just, you know, like singing songs over there. So AAA servers. So let's go into AAA servers and go into authentication servers. So I got all those servers set up already that you saw in the security tab. So choosing uh, 192.168.35.188 port 18.12, that's a default radius port for authentication and authorization. And the accounting over here, we select that. After that, we're gonna go into advanced tab and basically select the AAA override functionality. Now what this is, is basically, it kind of enables the change of authorization, authorization to actually function. So we have to enable that. The DHCP address assignment, if you want, you can actually do this. What, will, what this will do is it won't allow any static IP addresses uh, to come in. You can enable that, you could just leave that uh, if you don't want, uh, if you don't bother that static IP assignments. Um, the other thing is the NAC state. Now, this is important because uh, what this will do is it won't check the local database for the MAC addresses and stuff. It will just send it to ICE. Uh, and it's up to ICE to actually send it some URL uh, redirections. If you want those URL, URL redirections to work, you have to enable ICE NAC. Um, okay, the other thing I would want to do is uh, radius client profiling. It's important to know what devices are connecting and truth be told, profiling is a thing that actually ICE doesn't, I mean, it does do it by default, but these NADs or network access devices like switches and wireless controllers actually help ICE to de determine um, uh, what is that? Okay, assignment required option. Okay, I get it, I get it. So uh, that would mean that I need to enable uh, address assignment. There it is. So as I was saying that it, this controller will actually help ICE to determine what device this is. I mean, whatever device is connecting to. Maybe it's uh, um, uh, an Android phone or an iPhone to to determine that uh, properly, you need help from these network ad address, uh, sorry, access devices. Now, uh, one thing in the virtual WLC is this flex connect, flex connect local switching is always enabled. Um, we normally have um, switching, central switching, means if a packet comes from this uh, phone, the access point is gonna get it and it's gonna uh, send it in via its CAPAP tunnel towards the controller and the controller is gonna send it out uh, in, you know, if it was at ICMP and you were doing kind of sniffing over here on this trunk port on VLAN 99, you would see that as an ICMP packet. Um, so, so all the packets actually go from uh, to your network, they go through it and go toward the WSC and WSC basically forwards the packet out, out towards the network and eventually towards the uh, internet. So uh, by default, what uh, Flex local switching is doing, it's, it's saying that uh, the data packets are gonna go from here locally because it's a virtual WSC. 
So normally they're defaulted to Flex Connect APs. Uh, but you could actually uh, change that behavior if you uh, disable this. Now all the packets will go from the virtual controller and we want that because we want to apply specific ACLs on uh, the user session. And it's normally the case in uh, production environments. Obviously this is a lab environment. So um, here things are a little bit different. So um, that's normally how you actually do it, except for remote sites. I mean, which are on MPLS or something like that. So, uh, so there it is. So we've got this configured and go to general again, and I'm gonna enable SSID. Hopefully it should work now. Uh, I guess SSID is enabled. Let me just check that if it's coming up. Oops, not what I really wanted. So, okay. Let me check if it's uh, broadcasting it or not. Hang on a second, please. Um, <laughs> actually, I forgot my my AP is not powered on. Uh, Got to power that on real quick. Just pausing the video right now. Okay, so I just powered on my access point and my switch. I just forgot that I had uh, not powered them on. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, but you can see now we have that BY, uh, where is it? Guest SSID, guest underscore SSID over here showing up. So it won't work as of right now because we have we don't have settings on the iServer itself. So let's go ahead and configure portals and the ICE policies now. So going towards ICE, the first thing that the user is going to see is uh, the guest portal. So let's hop on to workstations and we go into guest access and the portals and components. Now there are two major things, actually there are a lot of major things, but two really important things over here, the guest types and the guest portals. So as you can see, the guest portal is self-explanatory. Yeah, this is the portal that the guest will see okay that's that's fine so uh, what are guest types well guest types are the attributes of the guests uh, now by attributes i mean uh, how many mm, hours or days the users will get guest access for or how many devices can connect um, on that specific guest portal means if i register my I mean, like this this uh, Android device or iPhone device. Can I connect the my other uh, laptop with the same credentials or not? Or do I have to uh, like go ahead and make another account for my laptop? So that's basically the case over here. Um, so these are basically the attributes. Let's create actually. Let's duplicate this one so we can actually duplicate, create a new one, or edit the existing ones. So uh, let's just create, duplicate the daily guest type. And let me just edit that. So I'll just call it uh, DN guest type. That will be the name. Uh, so if I want to specify some policies on these kind of guest types in the policy sets, uh, I could actually do that with this guest type name. So, um, okay, the description, let's just zoom in that. And as you can see over here, uh, there are some things that we need to see. One of them is that maximum access time, how much time will be given to this account or this user when it's created. So let's specify that in hours, or you could specify it in minutes as well. So let's do like two hours. So the guest will have, have access for two hours and we can change it from first login. Uh, so when the, the guy, the guest guy actually logs in via the credentials that he has created, uh, at that moment, the timer will start. And then we have some login options. So maximum simultaneous logins, how many do you want? So I'll just say one for testing purposes because we are gonna be testing that. Uh, so if the logins do exceed the limit, what do you wanna do? 
So for this lab, we'll say disconnect the oldest connection. So I'll be like connecting my Android phone uh, after I've connected my uh, laptop, which is a virtual actually device that you will see. I'm kind of like emulating that device uh, via virtual VM uh, over here, which I will show you in when we go for the testing of our guest user. So uh, these are the only settings that I will amend in the guest type section. Now it's time to go into guest portals. Now uh, guest portals are huge, okay? You could really get lost in them. Uh, so let's just uh, duplicate that. But before I do that, there are three type of guest portals. Uh, you can actually create a new one and specify some criteria, some check marks, and you can make any one of these guest portal types of your own. So these are the, just the default ones. So that's a hotspot guest, so you will only need a code. Uh, I mean, you can often require a code, access code. That's, uh, that's, that's nice, but um, um, if they only have that code, that, um, that won't be, I would say, managing them would be better, that you would know that, okay, which are the guests. You can actually do one thing with self-registered guest guys, uh, which you can't do with hotspot, is you can actually uh, shoot an SMS or an email to uh, the guest users. So in that way, you could actually get their numbers or email addresses. Um, or you could actually prompt them their uh, username and password. That's your call. But you won't have that in hotspot guests. So this is uh, the beauty of the self-registered guest portal. And the sponsored guest portal is just like the old days. You have to go in and create a username and password account uh, for the specific guest. It means if I go to an organization, I'll, I'll, uh, whoever I'm meeting, I'll say, uh, my name is Emma, then you please give me guest access. So you'll just create a guest or an existing guest account will be given to me and I'll just log in to that. So the registered uh, self-registered guest portal is quite a neat one, uh, but we're not going to be using the default one, so we'll just duplicate that and make it our own. Now it does take some time. Um, in this, actually, uh, I would say whenever you create something or you want to save the guest portal, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so you got to bear with me on this. So self-registered guest portal default copy one. So going into that. First of all, we'll change this name. Not a very um, unique or good name that is. So as you can see, it's taking a lot of time. It does do that, okay? So uh, first of all, let's just change the name to, oops, DN Guest Portal Self. I'll call it Self. Okay. Uh, guess may create your own account. Okay, pretty good. Okay, there's a lot of settings, a lot of settings that you can actually go through. Uh, but we're gonna just go through the basics. If you want more information, you can actually also uh, dig deep or I'm trying to build a course on this, so maybe I will be showing you that later. Um, so portal settings, first of all, the, the this is the default port number on which the portal will be accessed. And uh, Authentication method is uh, guest portal sequence. Now here, but I will only amend uh, the guest type to my guest type uh, so that it inherits the login options, whatever I specify in the get, that guest type. So that's the first thing, just, uh, okay. So the login page settings. Now um, here, if you have this um, option enabled, allow guests to create their own accounts. This is basically enabling the self-registration guest portal. Now, allow guests to reset their password. Let's just disallow that for the time being, just to make things simpler. Again, you can allow social logins as well. A lot of things you can do, but we're just going to be doing the basics. So that's all we'll be able to be requiring over here. And going to register and form settings. Uh, so assign to guest type. So once they register themselves, which guest type on the back end or the settings you want to apply you know that those uh, maximum sessions and f how much time they will be allowed on the network so uh, as you can see uh, it's selected to daily uh, 
and account value for one day is shown over here so let's just change that and see what happens so uh okay account value for one hour maximum two hours now i don't know why didn't why didn't it said two hours it should have said two i guess uh but it didn't say two or here so the fields that the user will actually see are over here so these are actually the fields which i, I will show you in a um a portal test url over here that we have specified so first of all let's just amend that to say i'll just say okay let's make let's uh, let them create their own usernames okay so i'll just amend all these fields all of them i don't need that these are for if you want uh, the mobile number it's better that you should have SMS services running on which you can shoot SMS's to their phones on so in that way you will get their number at least uh, on which number they got their passwords and logged in so in that way if they're doing some something fishy on your network or something might had happened in your network that was fishy and you got to know it later you can always track that user so SMS provider here, if you have that setting enabled only, you will uh, you will click that. So uh, you can actually specify the reason for the visit. So we'll just leave that as B. So they're going to be creating the username and you're, they're going to be specifying uh, their reason for the visit. Or the person to be being visited could be the case as well. So yeah. So okay. So that's it. Uh, after this login is done this is the register form settings once they uh sorry not login uh if the registration has been successful they're going to be prompted for some information about themselves so what are you going to show them so uh if, even if you have all these checks enabled it all depends on what fields you had configured over here in the registration form settings so if I had first name, last name over here configured to be put in by the guest user, they will pop up over here. But the thing is, they will only be putting in their username and uh, the person being, sorry, reasons for the visit, okay? Even though it's all check marked here, but it won't actually work. Uh, they won't be shown anything. But it all depends if they have uh, that uh, form over there. Oh, I got my kid. And he's knocking the door. Give me a second, please. Okay, so he's gone. Uh, he's a naughty kid. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so got the self-registration success settings. Uh, they're applied. Okay, after that, they ha they have to um, acceptable usage policy. If you want them to accept that, let's just not include that. You can actually make it your own if you want to. And that's pretty much it. So let's just save this page right now. And after it has saved, we'll uh, post the test URL <clears throat> and see uh, what can we the guest see. Okay, uh, so that will be the kind of like the actual page and settings that the guest will see. So it's kind of like very good uh, in terms that you can see what you have done and if things are not working right or fine you can always amend that over here before rolling it out in production so let's do a post test URL here and this is what they're gonna be prompted for so uh, they can log in obviously or they can register for guest access so going into that these are the field that I showed you that will pop up so let's say it's a uh, Ahmed, oops, that's my name. Uh, Ahmed and reason for visit, maybe a job application. Application, but I got it wrong. All uh, right, <laughs> register. And straight away, you can see uh, my username has prompted up and the password is 3013. So the first page that you saw is basically, let's do that again. Let's do it again. I'll show you over here. Registration form settings. This is the first page that you saw over here. Uh, here, once they hit register, this is the first page. The username field will be shown, and the purse, the reason for visit will be shown. So uh, the, these are those fields. Once they have registered, as you saw just right now, 
the account is created this is the account creation page and uh, if I were to pull that up again here and self registration success page so the registration was successful and we have all these options in which username and the reason for visit has been checkmarked so uh, that is being shown reason for visit and uh, the username and also the password is uh, shown over here so let's go to sign on again oops sorry there's an error so it happens in um, I would say when you're testing it out with this kind of a mechanism of post test URL it does happen a lot but I think it should be successful oh hang on I'll just do it again so Emma one one because I f didn't see the um, none yeah I didn't see the password actually so Emma the 11 uh, 4787 so sign on again so okay now it's working maybe it's it just timed out on one copy paste the password and sign on so uh, so this is a field that it's saying you're required to change your password uh, this is a good uh, I would say way to actually change their passwords once they're logged in because this password has been generated by the system in ice so it's it should be a good practice to actually change the password this way so let me just change that so submit that and you have an access so I'll just hit continue and this time at this time the change of authorization will occur once you uh, click con continue and their access will change at that moment uh, and if you want to change that uh, password which we guess change password setting if you require if you don't require guests to change their password at first login uh, so you can actually uncheck this box and you won't get that uh, specific uh, password prompt that we saw the old password the new password so you can actually get rid of that if you wanted to okay so uh, that's it for the guest portal now if you wanna actually manage the, that account that was created it's actually managed by uh, this tab over here so you should click manage accounts now it's not gonna work um, to be told it's not gonna work this way uh, the thing is actually hang on let me see now this is a concept of sponsored portals so the guys that that will actually manage the guest accounts are called sponsors so we have a sponsor sponsor portal over here uh, as you can see uh, we have a default portal let's just open it up so this will be a separate portal that will only be used for only managing those guest accounts that were created so uh, let's see hmm. okay uh, let's go to portal settings not much settings or in this portal except that uh, what will be the fully qualified domain name to access this portal so you may have some uh, two or three or four or five IT guys that will be actually managing guest users. Uh, so how will they actually access their portal? So they will be given a specific portal and credential, obviously, to access uh, the sponsor portal on which they will see these all these user uh, these user guest user credential uh, not credentials guest user accounts. So they can they can actually extend uh, the validity or tenure of them uh, means if it's valid for two hours they want to extend that time they could do that they could delete the account they could uh, send their credentials via SMS or something I mean the sky's the limit mm, actually there is a limit the sky is not the limit actually but still it's pretty neat so let's say I would say sponsor doctor networks com I'll say this is uh, the way that these my my IT guys are gonna open this page so I'm gonna save that and uh, one thing I forgot to say what is gonna be the authentication mechanism so wait a second, it's still saving that hang on first of all let me see if this part portal actually prompts up uh, you could actually do a test your post test URL and oh 
it's not working so uh it's not working so let me, let me uh just uh, bear with me uh, for a moment i have to go into my 40 gate and actually configure uh this guy i mean uh, the domain uh side i haven't actually configured that dns okay going into my 40 gate because my 40 gate is actually acting as a dns server as well in this environment so it's handing out uh, IP addresses as well for my local network and actually acting as a cached only DNS also. So go into network and DNS servers. And I've got this set up. Okay. I should have done this before. Okay, uh, it's actually pointing, it's, it's there, it's pointing to the wrong server. This was my previous I server which has expired. So changing that to this guy. Okay. Now let's see. First of all, can I actually resolve this guy? Sponsor .com. Okay, it's not working. Uh, let me check that again. Networks.com. There's something wrong that I do. Okay, I'm just gonna be pausing this video. Just wanna see uh, what's up with all this. Okay, so uh, my DNS is now working. Uh, what the problem was that my wireless was actually pointing towards 4.2.2.2, or was it 8.8.8.8 maybe? So it wasn't actually pointing towards my 40 gig firewall for this specific wireless network. So that was the reason it wasn't actually resolving it. So going to advanced and proceed. Again, this certificate error is coming because um, my device doesn't actually uh, recognize this guy uh, name as sponsor. So if you wanna see my video on certificates, that's also available on uh, my platforms, my uh, YouTube and my uh, LinkedIn as well so I'll just leave the link in the description of that video and you can see how you can actually amend that behavior to actually make it uh, secure for you okay so uh, if you've got this that sponsor portal page now the problem is the problem is um, how will we authenticate that so let's go into users you can actually uh, configure Active Directory or LLAP you can authenticate the users via LDAP as, or uh, AD as well. Uh, for this lab, I'm just doing it internally. So going into identities, these are the internal usernames. So I already have that created. Let's just create another one, uh, like with the name of sponsor. Sponsor. I'll give it a password. Okay. And. Uh, the group that I will select is uh, for the time being all accounts. So let's uh, uh, submit that. Okay, so that's working. Uh, so the sponsor is a username. Now let's try if it works here. Sponsor. Let me check that. Is it working? Okay, that's working. Fine, great. So you can actually configure to uh, use Active Directory users as well. So we have actually done that in deployments. Uh, so this is the sponsor portal tab on which, as I told you, uh, some guys will actually manage the accounts. So let's go into manage accounts. And as you can see, these are the accounts that I actually created uh, in the testing environment. So I'm at double one and only I'm at. As you can see, the status is different for both of them. Now what happened is I, I actually logged in via Ahmed over here, as you can see, Ahmed double one, and that's why it says active. While this one is created and has not been actually uh, logged in. And that's why it shows a 90 days. Now one thing I don't get is it's showing me only for nine minutes and should have been uh, at least one hour for nine minutes. Not sure why that's happening, but I'll see you that. 
but uh, let's go ahead and configure our policies first of all and we can check that this out later so uh, policies are going to be really simple hopefully <laughs> so i'm going to policy sets now uh, the way i see policy sets is that these are kind of like the floodgates okay so um there's specific conditions that they match and once they match, they actually go down towards their authentication and authorization parts uh, so it's better to make it granular uh, as much as possible so that it's easy to manage because I've seen some deployments that only have the default policy set and everything is inside that. So uh, you could do that, obviously it works, but the problem is that the manageability of that is really hard to manage, okay? So don't do that. So let's go into policy sets. I'll just say I'll create a policy for guest access. That's the name of the policy. And uh, let's keep it really, really simple. You could get granular as you go ahead, but I'm gonna make it really, really simple. So what I'm gonna match on is um, the device type I'm gonna be using. So dictionary device, the attribute is the device type and actually select that virtual WLC over here. You remember we created the network access device. I showed you that actually we didn't create that, but I showed you that I made a device group and I assigned the virtual WLC to that group. And this is the, that group that we're calling right now. So now you see why is it so much important uh, to actually uh, group the device. So I'll use that. So uh, the default network access, um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just show you this default network access too, what, it, what protocols are actually allowed inside of this. Uh, so there's a protocol called host lookup that should be actually allowed inside of this at least, check mark, because that will actually allow uh, Max to come in. So let's save that over here. and now next now as you can see now this is the authentication and authorization part of guest access so uh if i go back to policy set this is for byod if i want to uh left click on this arrow uh, now this is all policies of byod so you see how much um this makes your life much more easier uh, than just having a single policy set and everything is inside that. So going into the guest access again, we got this authentication policy. You know, just uh, for the time being, let's just forget author authorization policy, local exception and global exceptions. Uh, let's just focus on authentication policy and authorization policy. Now, one thing before we go ahead here is you should, uh, or you may have watched, my video on AAA on Radius versus TACX, in which I said that Radius basically combines authentication and authorization. So if it does that, that means the request, uh, okay, let me just show you here. The, the request will come from the controller to the, w, uh, sorry, controller to the ICE uh, via access request, via Radius. And once it does that, the ICE has to check both the authentication and authorization, both of them, and then send a reply towards the WSC. So Radius doesn't actually have separate authentication and authorization parts, just like in TACX. It has the same packet actually going back towards the WSC. So uh, if you haven't got that, let me just show you over here what I mean. Uh, first part is authentication, right? We all know AAA. First part is authentication. Now, by default, when a guest comes in, would he know anything about like um, any password or will you have their MAC address in their database? No, you won't, right? Uh, that is because it's a guest user. You don't have any um, information about his device. So uh, what you can do right now is uh, I could actually go in and say, I could use a default one, but let's just create a new one, new rule here. Say DN authentication. 
I hope I've spelled that correctly. And uh, now that it's not the default, so you have to specify some conditions here as well. So we're going to go and specify the same condition over here again, uh, which was uh, the device type. Uh, device type of wireless controller again you could get really granular with this I mean uh, yeah you could get really granular <laughs> that's for sure okay <clears throat> but that because it's not the default one so obviously you need some kind of condition to match the upper rule rule right so uh, okay so once it hits this rule what's gonna happen so the condition has met, okay, it's coming from the wireless WSC. Actually, I just, uh, okay, actually I, actually I could just specify, actually I should actually specify an SSID over here as well. Because it's going to match the BYOD to if this is the case because, um, or not. Hang on. Actually, yeah, let me just do that real quick. This is the policy set, by the way. I'm going to use that here. So uh, the first condition is this one, and the other is we're going to use that SSID. So the con the the con the dictionary is normalized ra radius, and the attribute is SSID. So uh, that was guest underscore SSID. Now uh, the thing to keep in mind: it should not be equal; it should be contains. And I'll show you in a minute why I've done that, but just bear with me for a moment. So using that, now here, once they are inside the floodgate, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, now um, we can specify the same SSID parameter over here as well, but actually we don't need to because the flow is now inside this guest access policy set. So it's gonna hit this one anyways. So once it does hit this one what we want to do we don't we don't have any other uh, user uh, information so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it to internal users and we, if user is not found we get a you know specify the options over here and if user is not found you have to continue now some of you might be saying that uh, what do you mean continue you mean you're allowing it uh, guest access absolutely yes I am kind of allowing it because remember authentication and authorization are two parameters that uh, the response goes back to the, the WLC so authentication must pass in order for me to actually first of all get it to the authorization policy in which I will have that redirect portal or configured actually i uh, i forgot one step actually let, let, let's just save it over here now that i specify redirection portal one thing i need to specify what is the portal and where is the portal and what is the profile for that so we have got gone up till this step and just one step we want to do is we want to go into policy and results and here we have authorization profiles and downloadable access lists now um, in switches you need downloadable ACLs and spe and also in ASA firewalls but in um, wireless LAN controllers you don't actually need to go into downloadable ACLs you just need to go into authorization profiles so let's create an authorization profile it says DN guest um, pre Ought, or I would say registry reg, regis, registration okay registration so this profile will be called only for registration purposes okay so in this profile you could do a lot of things but the major thing that you need to do is specify a web redirection over here so centralized web auth will be the type and you have to specify the ACL and the portal. Now, as you can see, this is the DN guest portal as you uh, as we were creating that actually. So uh, DN guest portal is over here. Now, what's up with this ACL? Now, uh, for that, we actually have to go into the controller. Now, it's it doesn't use downloadable ACL, so you cannot actually download an ACL for the controller, right? So 
the thing how it works is the ECL should already be present on the controller. Now, oops, timed out. Let me just log in again. Now going into access control lists over here. Now I have a bunch of ACLs already created uh, just to save some time because it's gonna take some time. So I have two ACLs created. It's pretty simple. It, it won't take you long actually to create them. So let's just hop on to guest pre-guest ACL. That's the name. Let's copy that. Now what's actually happening is I am allowing DNS requests to go towards the internet or wherever that might be. And um, I'm also allowing access toward ICE. Okay. Uh, so, um, and I'm also allowing access outbound. Now, uh, now inbound and outbound sh may confuse most of you, uh, as it does uh, confuse me as well. Uh, let me just uh, see if I can grab my pen really quick. And let me say that. Okay, I got a pen. Now let me do see if I have an epic pen here. Epic pen. Okay. Mm. So I create, uh, what this means is basically, if this is a, uh, this is an AP, this is an access, uh, this is an access, um, sorry, excuse me, this is a wireless access point. Uh, for the access point, these are the users, okay? So I'll say this is the user, and this is the network or the controller or whatever it is, network. So uh, the inbound basically means this side, okay? So anything inbound to the AP from the user's perspective. So DNS is gonna be allowed. So if it goes to the words, the DNS, uh, the DNS are allowed. And if it wants to go inbound towards uh, the ICE, this is basically the IP address of the ICE server. So that is also allowed. And the return tra traffic is kind of like outbound. The outbound means this side. So um, that means if these guys are inbound allowed, that obviously the outbound is also allowing them as well. But everything else is not allowed. So what do you mean not allowed? Well, I mean anything else they want to access is going to be redirected towards the ICE. That's how it's going to work. You see, uh, whenever a um, user is trying to access the internet, first of all, um, we have these pop-up, uh, basically, I would say, browsers open up on users and they would be seeing the iced login pages uh, that you saw over there, which was the guest login page. So for that to actually work, the DNS should work, right? I mean, um, when they're trying to reach Google supposedly, or they're trying to reach some other site, they have to actually resolve the DNS first of all, and then they can actually send the packet, you know? Uh, so the DNS is a must in that case. Uh, so they will be redirected towards ICE, so we don't want any redirection to happen for ICE, okay? So, anything else they're trying to access will be redirected. So, you could say anything that is denied in this access list. Oh, where, where is the deny part? Uh, yeah, permit, <laughs> there it is. I forgot to. So anything anything that is being denied is actually being redirected in our case because we are specifying a redirect ACL. You get my point? Maybe you don't, maybe you do, but uh, it is how it works actually. Uh, let me just show you how it's gonna work. So what I'm gonna doing is uh, copying this and going towards ICE and pasting it over here. So remember, anything denied is going to be redirected, okay? So this is the redirect URL that they will be getting. That will be the ICE's, uh, I guess it'll, it'll be the name by default. If you want to specify the IP address in the redirect URL, you could actually specify static IP assignment over here. Um, 
but I'll just uh, do it for the name because name resolution in my network is working fine for ice so uh, if it isn't working fine I'll just amend that okay so let's submit that so we got one authorization profile created which is DN guest registration so I'll just create another one that says DN guest allowed okay <laughs> I said TK in Urdu man okay for this access list I'm gonna be using I'm not gonna be using web redirection because I'm not going to be redirecting the clients I could actually uh, say that I want to block specific traffic going towards my internal network maybe or something something of that sort depends on your organization but however you want to create it so I'll just click airspace ACL now what this ACL is is the post guest recession ACL so this is essentially the second ACL that will be applied to the guest session so um, Oh, where is it? So there is a post guest ACL. Now everything is actually permitted in this ACL because it's a lab environment. Normally I would actually deny all the RFC 1918 traffic means everything inside of my network which is on private IP addresses won't be accessible to the guest user. Uh, but for testing purposes to see if this ACL is applied accurately or not, I'm just going to be denying an IP ping packet towards 4.2.2.2 in our case. Um, so this is the post guest ACL. I'm going to be copying that and going to the airspace ACL and pasting that over here and submitting that. So it's like just creating ACLs, okay? You you haven't actually applied them; they're just being created. Uh, and just uh, just to give you an insight of the allowed protocols that I was discussing in the policy set, the default network access. Um, let's go and open this one up. So these are the default, uh, I would say, authentication protocols and everything. Uh, this is all EPTLS, PEEP, and all .1x related, BYOD related. Uh, but for us, only the process host lookup is uh, necessary for us to be checkmarked for this specific policy set. Everything else could be unchecked uh, if you want it for this policy set. It's your call. So uh, as it's checked, so I won't be you know amending all those parts because now I'm basically saying that, okay, now... Host lookups can work, PAP chap can work, not chap, only PAP can work, EBMD5, TLS, all those can work, which is not actually our concern as of right now. So let's not save that. I haven't amended anything over here. So let's go back to our policy sets. Now, this is where we're going to be calling these guys. Okay, so remember our guest access over here going towards that, going towards the authorization policy. And now we're going to be saying this is going to be called DNCWA, Centralized Web Auth. So uh, the condition, first of all, is going to be I'm going to say if they're coming from the SSID, SSID of, okay, where is it? Normalized radius, uh, normalized radius. SID contains SSID. I thought this video was going to be small. It's quite big. Okay, use that. So, really, not not really specific. I would say, but it'll do. If that is the case, then what do you want to do? What are the profiles that will be applied? So we just created the profile that was called DN guest registration. There it is, in which we have the redirect um, URL. So let's save that. So it's been saved. Now um, I just really need to set up my VMware for authentication purposes. Uh, where is it? I'll just pause the video for a moment. I'll just uh, fire up my VM and I'll show you how it works. Now, for some reasons that I don't actually know, my VMware workstation is not working. The Windows inside of it is not booting up. It's stuck over here. 
uh, but still I have another uh, machine that's a physical machine actually that's uh, over here residing here hang on let me get my access to ice let me do a refresh because I've changed the network to get that physical machine with me for this testing purpose Now, uh, you have to assume that this guy, this phone, is actually my machine now. And it's trying to connect to the guest SSID on this access point. And via cap app tunnel, it's going to go towards uh, the controller. The controller is going to, uh, first of all, check in with ICE. Um, and then the ICE policy sets is gonna, are going to hit. And once that happens, the redirect URL is going to be given from the ICE to the virtual WSC and virtual WSC will apply it to this client's session. That's the first phase. I haven't actually defined the second phase, what will happen when the guest user registers himself. And we will do that on the fly. Uh, but let's just go towards this machine. And uh, hang on a second, it's a little bit small, don't you think? Let me just uh, change the setting real quick. Oh man, chaos. Okay, remote desktop. And we got this guy. Show session display. Just change this to full and disconnect it again. And giving it a password. Um, hopefully it works. Okay, great. So now, uh, let's see if it's Wi-Fi is on yeah so it's Wi-Fi is on that's cool now let's check for the Wi-Fi of guest SSID now let's connect that and let's see if we get um, an IP address what are our problems over here what can we do to minute okay great I think we have done it the redirect ACL is uh, re redirect policy is working fine and great one thing I would indeed point out over here as you can see I didn't get a certificate error now I have actually deployed this in production and I would highly recommend that you should sign your um, ICE's certificate with a well-known certificate authority if you want it to work perfectly the reason is that uh, guests are gonna come in and they aren't gonna trust your organizational uh, CA so they will obviously trust um, well-known CAs uh, like Semantic has it, I guess, and uh, VeriSign. So there are many um, certificate authorities out there. So I would highly recommend you to at least sign your certificate uh, with those guys before you deploy the guest portal because I've seen problems happening with many uh, clients that don't have their... Um, certificate registered with one of those so if I if I were to take a look at this certificate that I have uh, over here you can see the certificate pad is Dr. Networks this is my C and my internal C which I have added in this specific client that I'm testing on but if it's not actually sometimes this redirection even does not work which has happened automatically as you can see so this is the first phase. Now let me just show you what's happening on the ice. So if I were to jump on to operations, operations, and going towards the live logs. Now, now we can see here uh, we have, this is the guy that is actually connecting towards uh, the guest. Now let me just uh, show you what's actually happening behind the scenes. So this is the one I'll open up. And as you can see, uh, this is actually the steps that are happening. This is the user's MAC address and user not found in the internal identity source. The subject is not found. So the advanced option said the continue, to continue actually. The continue advanced option is configured in case of a failed authentication request. So we're actually taking it further towards the authorization policy on which we'll hit the, the redirect um, URL. So, so this is the flow the guest access is the policy set and this is the authentication policy that it hit um, and this is the authorization policy of that of that uh, policy set that it hit so if I were to show you over here this is this is our policy set 
this is the guest access that you see over here the name specified over here and if I go over to go inside of it I created a specific policy DN authentication as you can see it's named over here and uh, it said to continue if the user is not found so we are fallen into this guy this DNCWA and this is the authorization so authorization result is basically saying the profile that gets applied to with respect to the rule is DN guest registration in which we have the redirect ACL Whew, yikes that's a lot of information huh um, so uh, but don't worry uh, I would say I would say that this takes a lot of doing I would say because I've been doing this for a lot of time that's why I'm going like it's a piece of cake, you know, like it's a piece of cake. It's not actually a piece of cake. It takes a lot of doing. I just, my mind always just fries up when I'm ever, I, wa I was doing this uh, project. And uh, whenever I was given this kind of task, my mind would just blow up. So I would actually have to do it again and again to make myself comfortable and it takes a lot of time. So, so we know that our guest registration URL redirection is working, but what will happen once they have registered and they hit continue? So once they hit continue on that portal page, change of authorization is going to happen. And ICE is going to tell uh, the controller that, okay, the user has registered, you need to bounce his session so that I can actually give a new access list to you, which you should have already configured on yourself, and you need to apply that on its session, on the user. So actually, let me just show you this. Uh, if I go to uh, clients over here, we only have one client over here, so this is the one. If I were to go there and say, find access list. Okay, so there it is. Access is override, this is the one pre-guest ACL is, is uh, applied as of right now on this guest and this should change when change of authorization happens okay so um, let's first of all create a policy it's gonna be a simple policy let's just duplicate this one uh, duplicate above and it's gonna be the same uh, SSID and there's going to be one new option that I'm going to uh, add in here and that is going to be I just go down network access guest sorry not guest use case yeah use case so it's gonna say guest flow so it's going to be coming from a flow of the guest registration you can say it okay so use that and i'm going to change the profile to something guest the in guest allowed oh, we've got two of them so delete that one so you get my point now uh once the any user is trying to register we'll do that again right now it's not going to hit this authorization uh, rule this DN oh sorry <laughs> uh, sorry guest authenticated I'm gonna make that name of that rule so this rule is not going to be hit because the conditions are two and in an and argument so the the guest SSID needs to be guest underscore SSID first of all and the use case should be guest flow. By guest flow, I mean it's coming from a guest registration process or from the guest page, okay? This one is gonna hit by default for every other user because they're not going to be coming from a guest flow, okay? So let's just save that and go towards operations, live logs, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, it's timed out, I'll just do it again. Let's just disconnect it from this SSID and try to connect it again. Connecting to the guest SSID on this test machine that is emulating as a guest. 
So right now it's getting the IP address and it's, that controller is connecting to ICE and it's got the redirect ACL applied on it. Just the way it was before. So now we're going to do the register for guest access as we were. This is the same uh, portal that we were seeing. So I'll say, I'll say guest buddy, guest buddy. So reason for visit, none, I'll say none. Okay, I was thinking of something really uh, different, but uh, I didn't know what to write. So register that. So as you can guest buddy has got, that's a big username by the way. I shouldn't have made that one, guest underscore buddy. 3406, so let's sign on. So guest underscore buddy and the password. Now, uh, as we're doing this, let me show you on ICE what's happening. So, he has actually connected again, and this is uh, this time, this is the same uh, policy, policy uh, authentication policy and authorization policy that it's hitting. Let me just clear everything out. Clear, oh, not that. Clear tabs to the right, doing that. This is the same policy that, it, that has been applied, as you can see, DNCWS centralized webbot. Now, let's go to where is our uh, there it is. So let's sign on. Now, change of authorization hasn't happened right now. Okay, so if I were to show you like this, maybe yeah, like that. So maybe you can see it now a little bit. No, it's not a good idea not a good idea at all so let me just put in my current password here and change my password so change of authorization is not happening nothing is happening behind the scenes only the user is talking with the ice okay submitting that now here is the part where I will hit continue once I hit continue you will see a change of authorization happening on the back end here and if things work perfectly so you can see yeah you can see this is basically what's happening between the user and the ice it's not happening between the controller right now so let me check that as you can see guest authentication passed you can see so this passed authentication now before it times out I gotta go there and say continue okay now if I were to refresh it over here should see okay uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Now you can see that. Now, with a MAC address, actually, you can uh, get up there and say, receive re-authenticated request, prepare the re-authenticated request, client about send request, type client received response. So it, it this is basically the response back uh, of the change of authorization. Now, if first of all, we have to see if the client has internet access or not. Let's check that out. Oh, beauty. You can see that it has inter indeed has internet access. So if I were to open Google, I can open Google. That's pretty sure. Now, one thing we did is we said we're going to block uh, ping packets going towards 4.2.2.2. Let me just ping 8.8.8.8. And that's working. How about the 4.2.2.2? And it's sure enough, it isn't working. Now, why isn't it working? Let's hop on to our uh, wireless controller and go to clients again, hit that client again, and search for ACL. So there it is. Now, now that was basically the override ACL that you were seeing over there. Now it's IPv4 ACL because it's kind of like applying that ACL to the data packets now. It's not a redirect ACL. So you can see post guess ACL was actually blocking uh, 4.2.2.2 and that is working fine. So there it is there is your guest access the self-registration guest access just a couple of things before we go and close this out uh, sponsor guest portal let's uh, check that out we had sponsor sponsor as a user 
and uh, I hope I remember the password of that. Okay, I guess I do. So uh, as you can see, we have two, three accounts now, and one of them is guest underscore buddy. This was the thing I wanted to see. Let me just check that out. Uh, but if I if I were to open this guest buddy, uh, you see the password is also grayed out. You cannot see that it's dotted. It's not grayed out. It's dotted uh, because the user actually changed the password, which is good. You can actually um, have some security with between you and uh, the guest user. That's that's cool. Uh, you can actually reset the password. You can delete this account, suspend it, extend it, resend it. You can do a lot of stuff with it, but uh, it's it's for the management of the guest users. So uh, there it is. Now, uh, one thing we needed to check uh, if my VM, first of all, has uh, powered on. Okay, I can see my VM has powered on. That's cool. Uh, okay. Now, I had that setting in which I said that... Uh, if a new user connects in, the other should be disconnected. I hope that works <laughs> because that two hour isn't working. If if you're beer with me, uh, let me just uh, go ahead and see what's wrong uh, with that side. Could take some time, maybe. I'm trying my best not to blow it up here. Okay, so let me check my DN guest type. Um, sure enough, I've added two hours Default is one. Okay, sorry. I think this is the problem. That's why that's happening. So, uh, so yeah. Okay, save the hat. So this is the reason, basically, uh, why this was happening. So okay, that's done. So we we won't be checking that, but because I'm pretty sure this was the issue. So it was taking the default value. So. Um, Hang on, let me just, let me just see if I can extend this guy. Yeah, okay, so here it is. So the maximum of two hours, we've got it. So we can like extend this um, to two hours. By default, it was given one hour. And the two basically mentioned that if somebody, some sponsor guy wants to extend this account to two hours, he can do that. And he can only specify two hours. So that's a learning point for me that I, I didn't know. I, I, I just, it, just ignored that. So I'll just uh, take care of that as well once we, uh, once I deploy it in any other, any other place. Uh, the other thing was that I needed to see if if this guy actually connects with the same username and password, uh, guest underscore buddy, right? So, oh, not this one. Let me just go ahead and uh, go to my VM. I'm connecting a wireless USB adapter and I'm going to connect to this virtual machine and popping that up a bit okay um, well, let me check if it's getting the wireless connection yeah sure enough it's getting the wireless connection but it's also connected towards the LAN side let me just uh, close that out first of all so that it doesn't interfere with my wireless connectivity because it's going to get internet access via this guy oh these VMs are slow man disable that guy and okay so that's disabled let's go and if, it's, if our policy is working correctly we should be going into guest society connect that Taking a little bit of time, but it should work because it was working for that guy. Okay, yeah, so it's working. And uh, it has worked, but uh, it wasn't automatically redirected. Why is that? Let me just pop open a browser here real quick. Just maybe because it's slow maybe okay google.com yeah okay so it's not working and by the way that happened because it wasn't actually caching google as an HTTPS 
in uh, the browser so that's why I actually sent an HTTP packet and the Google was supposed to redirect it but we actually intercepted that packet and redirect towards ice so what was that guest uh, underscore buddy given the password that I created sign on uh, guest underscore buddy maybe I'm is it the same username let me just check it out man I'm just forgetting it uh, let me go to sponsor uh, is that username okay guest underscore buddy that's the username so yeah that should work should have worked uh, actually I, I, I've forgotten the password actually buddy Uh, there's something wrong with this I don't know I think I forgot the password let me just reset the password real quick uh, print okay oops that's not what I wanted so okay there it is so 1309 is the new password okay let me check this is this guy still connected yeah sure enough it's connected that's cool Okay, so 1309 is the password, is the new password. Let me go to the, my VM. 1309, guest underscore buddy, underscore buddy. That's <laughs> 1309, 1309. Okay, they sign on. For some reasons, it's failing. Oof, after a long troubleshooting session, uh, I just realized the problem uh, was that my that VM device that I was actually testing on was actually registered with BYOD. So it was registered with a BYOD user device. So that is why I couldn't actually log in. The other thing was I was uh, doing an ad the rate on Lenovo, but the ad the rate on Lenovo is a special character that is different from the normal at the rate so that that was the problem actually happening so let me just show you again now I have created a guest user uh, I've deleted the guest underscore buddy guy so um, now you can see we, we are also getting the one hour that we needed so it's uh, it's two hour by default now and the other thing is first of all I'm gonna go into this guy now this guy has uh, accessed or uh, logged in you know, via the guest account so it's using internet access via guest account so what's gonna happen once I actually go and log in with the same credentials on any other device my policy was that the previous device will disconnect so if I say guest and I go into and say uh, the password whatever it was sign on and once I hit continue here, right now I don't think, yeah, uh, I still have internet access as you can see. I'll just do a ping, extended ping as you can see. And once I, let me just do this like this. I mean, this one is what I want to see. Even though it, the, the result will not be as clear as you may want, or I may want, but yeah, still. Oops, it's, uh, it's small now. So as soon as I hit continue, What's gonna happen? It's gonna send uh, the ICE is gonna send a change of authorization request towards the controller, and it did that, and said, "Hey, controller, the session, the MAC address of uh, which is this guy over here on that's the physical machine on which I have a remote desktop, to, and this is a virtual machine. So uh, disconnect that session and put it back towards the same ACL that was pre-guest." And this guy has now got internet access. So it disconnects the previous device. That is what we had configured. So if you want to see that in action, let me just go towards the ICE and uh, show you the operations, live logs. 
So there's gonna be a lot of logs here, and uh, this 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 is should be the chain log radiation that triggered. Uh, received di disconnect, so it's receiving the disconnect. It should be sending that as well. I don't know why it doesn't show me the sending one. It just shows me the receiving one. So as you can see, it's kind of like sending and receiving disconnects uh, via change of authorization. So that is why it's so important to have change of authorization configured. Um, okay, so on the controller, if you want to see what is happening, is you can you'll have see two clients right now. Uh, so this guy, this guy is the guest one. This is the exactly the the one the VM one right now that has uh, that ACL applied. So if you want to see uh, ACL and there is post guest ACL apply on this session. And if I go to this guy and search for ACL, as you can see, pre guest ACL has been overrided. You want to see some fun? I just want to just do it for grins. This is a Last time I'll be doing this lab, maybe, uh, for for you guys. Uh, so I, I, I just want to see if what happens if I do this all over again. I just want to try it again and say, okay, you know what? Let's uh, go to uh, some website like that and see what happens. Uh, let me see if it's already connected to the guest society. It is. Uh, YouTube.com. So it's not working. It should work actually. Let's disconnect that and let's connect it again. It's the guest SSID. SSID. It should be prompting me for. Yeah, there it is. But it's okay now. Now it's working. Well, let's just do guest and say the password. Uh, sign on. Oh no, man! Please, <laughs> don't do this to me. Guest, go. Oh, uh, the password is just one two three four. Actually, uh, let me see if it's working fine. Yeah, it's it is okay. It's working fine now. So as soon as I hit continue, that now that guy will will be getting disconnected. This guy's oh there it actually needed. You can see over here. But what I want to see is on the control now. These will be rewarded, I guess. Uh, this guy will be coming up to the guest and let me see. Let me see what happens to the two guy, two the one nine 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 two user. Uh, Going to clients. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Now its username is guest and it's unknown. Pretty neat, huh? So uh, I hope you have um, learned how to do guest registration and a little bit about how it actually functions on the back end, how change of authorization is working and everything. Uh, a lot of troubleshooting going on. Um, some steps uh, were, s were not skipped, but I just forgot to actually um, uh, make them on the fly. And the reason is that because I'm kind of like relocating to a, lo a new location now, so I don't have a lot of time to actually uh, script this up, so I just did it on the fly for you guys. So I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.